Hi, I'm David Torn. Welcome to the humble abode of my first homespun video, Painting with Guitar, Exploring the Sonic Alternatives. In the next hour or so, I'm going to go through a number of things that you can do as a guitarist that take advantage of the guitar's more orchestral capabilities in this new age of electric guitar. Um, the first place we should start, while we'll explore many um, electronic and electric possibilities here via the stuff that's in this rack, delay lines, harmonizers, a mixer, etc., we'll start with the guitar, we'll move on to the amplifier, um, and we'll check out all the myriad foot pedals that are at my feet here. Uh, before we before we dive into the deep thing. Okay, so I guess where I want to begin is my basic setup here is it's a fairly simple electric guitar made by Steve Klein. It's got three pickups. Um, that can be used in quite a few combinations. Like most normal electric guitars, you've got a volume control, which I never use. And you've got a tone control. We're listening to the bridge pickup of this guitar right now, which is a DiMarzio pickup called Fred. That's what it sounds like. When you're going to explore some of the guitar's further capabilities, we need to start at the beginning because there are quite a few things that um, guitars tend to overlook until later on in their playing careers. One is basically the tone that you get directly out of the instrument with your hand, a pick, a pickup, the strings, etc., and the amplifier. So with the bridge pickup, in case you haven't read this or haven't figured it out yourself, you get a brighter tone with a lot of har high harmonics present in the sound. very bright. With the neck pickup, it's generally a darker tone. This is a DiMarzio multi-bucker, which has three clear, distinct tones. A darker single coil sound. A bright, loud humbucking sound, and another single coil sound. In the center position, we have this funny pickup by Joe Barden that's a, basically set up like a single coil pickup. It's actually a hum canceling uh, single coil pickup. Sounds like that. They all have a different. They all have. 
have very different characters and you might want to do different things with the different pickups. We'll get into that when we get a little further along in the amp. Um, this is a guitar that's set up with a five position switch so that you can get this kind of hollowed out, sort of out of phase in between the pickup sounds. <laughs> sounds much different than the bridge pickup on its own. The hollow sound again. And that was, by the way, musically, that was a funny way to approach an A minor blues scale. Um, Again, another pickup combination are th these two together, the neck and the middle pickup, out of phase, creating another type of hollowish sound. Sounds like this. And against the neck pickup by itself, which sounds like. So, also on my guitar, which is a little funny, I have a little tone control roll-off so that the bright sound, instead of using the tone control, to roll off the high end of the pickups, I've got this little switch that automatically takes some of the high end off, which I find useful when I'm using distortion, which we will get to in a second. OK. Before I move quickly away from the guitar onto the amplifier, pedals, and rack effects, um, point out a couple more things about the guitar. One, this particular guitar, um, is at the moment tuned in a standard tuning E, A, D, G, B, E. And it's actually almost in tune. And this, this is a bit of a strange guitar. It's based, um, it's based on the Steinberger, Ned Steinberger's design for a headless guitar with the tuners here. And it's got a very strange device here called a trans trem, which is actually um, a transposing, it's short for transposing tremolo, but in fact, tremolo is a modulation of volume, and vibrato is a modulation of pitch. These things are not really tremolo arms or tremolo bars. They're really vibrato bars. Therefore, we should have, he should have called this thing a trans vibe, but he didn't. Anyway, this bar is quite strange because trans is short for transposing. What it does is it takes, as opposed to a standard Stratocaster bar or what actually any other bar besides micro frets, uh, vibrato arms from the um, late 60s, I think, and um, 70s, it will take the entire tuning and transpose the whole thing in parallel. So I can go. or down, catch that view of this. The bar needs to be tuned a little bit at the moment, however, um, you get a picture of how this works. which not only makes for transposing effects, but also makes it for a much more even vibrato if you're using the arm. All strings are basically moving at about the same uh, rate of change. So um, you can do things like pedal steel type effects. Uh,
So um, you get the picture how this poorly named trans trem works. You can also, with this transposing vibrato, he said wryly, um, you can actually change the locket into or you can go down quite a bit. You have to use these special double ball end strings and you need to tune the bar every so often. I uh, forgot to tune the bar before I came to this session. So it's a little bit out, but. And to finalize, uh, complete my view of, your view of my picture here, um, this guitar is a solid spruce body and a single piece of politically correct Guatemalan rosewood, again made by Steve Klein. To clarify a couple of things about this trans trem here, um, I don't know if you noticed this, when I play a chord, because all the strings move at the same rate of change, if I pull the bar up, a whole step on one string from G to A on the E string, then it will move in parallel on all the other strings. So I've, if I've got this chord, which is some strange, uh, I guess we could call it uh, A minor 11 uh, with an E, G, C, D, and G again. Think of A as the root. If I pull this up, a whole step on the high string the whole chord will move up a whole step. So I'm transposing from that chord to that chord. Listen to the difference in terms of expression and nuance. From there to there, or from That's what this little trans trem baby is about. If you're playing like uh, in the key of A, in a country mode, you could say, See, I'm pulling these chords first, the G chord to the A chord, up a whole step, and then I, uh, I don't know what I did actually. I think what I did was... That illustrates some of the pedal steel type effects that you can get with something like the trans trem, in which I was playing this G triad. I pull it up a half step and then another half step. Then the same thing in reverse from the A chord. Back down to the G chord. Then I slide up with the bar. A D chord, swoop down to the B minor chord, then up again, to the, up to the C sharp minor chord, back down to the B minor chord, and I play the A triad in resolution and pull up from the A flat up to the A using the bar again. Down. 
I'm playing a D chord, but I'm pulling up the bar a whole step so I can hear this little E, D sharp, D, triadic cadence, and then pulling up on the A major chord for resolution. And there's the end of the lick. So it's a good way of being able to emulate and get a color out of guitar that really wasn't previously possible um, before the advent of Ned Steinberger's Transtrem. This is why I use it. It's a big part of my style, the ability to have that even vibrato move move the bar around in predictable ways all the time. I always know I'm going to get a whole step when I pull a whole step, a half step when I push a half step, whole step, minor third, etc. Now one more thing that we need to cover that's a basic in shaping your sound and then being able to eventually reshape it is the use of the amplifier. Um, what's common today is, you probably have one, is a channel switching amplifier in which one channel is meant to do um, a clean sound or sometimes an old Fender type sound and the other channel is meant to help you create a seriously overdriven, real distorted, fuzzy kind of sound. And um, it's, I think we should just go over some of the extremes in tone shaping on the amplifier before we get into some of the more advanced things in, um, in um, uh, signal processing. Okay, so let's go to my amplifier, which is, um, this is a Rivera M100. It's an all tube power section, all tube preamp section, and it's got basically two channels. There is a remote foot switch for the amplifier to my right here with which I can control the two channels, um, clean and dirty, um, reverb on and off, the effects loop, which is in the back of the amplifier, in or out. Um, I can actually turn the internal speaker of the amplifier off but still maintain a send to my effects rack, which we will discuss later with another switch. And there's one more switch on this amplifier, or actually there's two more switches that allow you to change the tone in two more ways. One is called Slave Master, which basically emulates the sound. It sounds to me like an old Fender Deluxe amplifier at any level without sounding buzzy or particularly harsh like most distorted amp sound when they're real low. And another switch called Ninja Boost, which sounds to my ear like um, it allows you access to the power amp more directly and a little bit louder than if you were passing through the preamp in a normal way. So let's go to the amplifier and we'll look at uh, the ways that I'm using the amp now and some extremes in tonal variation. And I guess, here's my a9, no third chord that I'll use. First, I'll run down the way I'm using the amplifier right now so you can get a sense of um, some extremes in amplifier usage, okay? Um, I'm running my preamp at five right now, almost five. I have the bright switch pulled out. The treble is on seven. The middle notch control is pushed in, so I have a little bit more low end via the middle control. Um, the middle is on six and, a, and change. The bass control is on three and bass boost, which is like, a, it's actually contour. It seems to compress the high end or the mids a little bit, um, actually open the highs a little bit and uh, give a little serious low end. That's pulled out. And the master volume on this clean channel is on 10. This is my treble pickup and it it's wide open, there's no tone control on it. As I said before, I hardly ever use the volume control. Now, what I'll do is, I'll give you some extremes in this channel. Even though this is the clean channel, it can be run rather distorted, like an old Fender. Mainly by cranking the 
all of the volume controls, not just the preamp volume, but the master and the preamp together. And that would sound like this. I'll now turn my preamp volume up to about, ooh, eight, and it's going to get pretty loud. This sounds a bit like a fender to me. It's got that old kind of Tweety Fender sound. And we will now, let's see, let's just mess with the tone controls just a little bit. I'm going to show you what this bright switch does. That's out. That's in. Now you can get some extreme differences out of the sound of the amplifier by the way you run the, uh, the preamp section. If I use quite a bit of middle, you'll hear a lot of honk, a lot more distortion, I think a bit more compression in the preamp side. Sounds all the same settings now, except for the middle is now on 10. I'll push that bright switch in. put everything on 10 just for the hell of it. Treble, middle, bass on 10. Now that's only the tone controls on 10. Now I'm going to do something extreme again. Take all the middle out. Middle will be on 1. And you'll hear a serious difference in the tone. You can hear that emptiness, the honk kind of goes away. And it's an interesting tone. Okay, let's move to the distortion channel. I'll have to move forward to get a little less noise here. Um, I'll leave the reverb on. Oh, there's a couple of more points I should make about this particular amp that's interesting for me. While many amps are channel switching amps these days, and you have a choice of a few sounds that you can make remotely on the fly while you're playing distorted sound reverb on off clean sound this amp has some control features that that are just very unusual and make it very attractive to me and some of the features are you can actually control the tightness or looseness of the the speaker um, the some of the older speakers and worn out speakers act very loosely and do funny odd warty things Warty as in full of warts. Um, and the, these odd little quirks that these old worn out speakers do is something that's very desirable in old amps. People seem to like it. So um, the Rivera guys put a control on the amp to con to, that is very extreme in being able to control the tightness of the speaker or the looseness of the speaker. If you want to get a real old floppy kind of... Um, um, very compressed in the low mid sound, you loosen the speaker a bit up. And there's also a presence control on the power amp that's very useful. It's also included this thing called Slave Master. Oh, I told you about that already, so I won't tell you about it again. Um, let's go to the distorted channel. Just give you some ideas. I will switch to distorted channel, leaving the reverb on here at the foot switch, just like you do, and we'll just get some ideas. This is my standard. This would be a basic sound that I would use for my distorted tone. That was, again, treble pickup, wide open, um, and volume control wide open as well. I will, let's look at this. I've got quite a bit of preamp gain. It's on eight. There's a boost switch pulled out. The middle at the moment is on about five. Treble's on about three, very low. Bass is almost eight. And the master is only on four. I'm running the amplifier at half its power in triode mode, which means um, only three of the five grids in the tubes are being used. It sounds 
again, made to emulate like a looser, um, very quirky sounding older amplifier, like a class A tube amplifier. It's meant to emulate that, and I think it does a very good job of it. Um, so this is a standard kind of tone for me for distortion directly from the amp. <laughs> got plenty of harmonics, enough um, low end to really dig in for me. And that's fine. And um, what I tend to do is smooth the sound out a little bit by rolling some of the high end off of my guitar with uh, the tone control here like this. Just bring it down to like three. <laughs> Bright sounds like this. Darker like this. Or I can leave that tone control wide open and use this little switch that I showed you before that just kind of rolls it right off. Or I could do a combination of both and the reason I do this is to kind of get a, a slightly more vocal. A vocal element in the sound that's more um, throaty and less of that kind of shrill, bright thing. Now, that's in general. Um, in given situations, I'll do anything to get the correct sound, and that might mean having it extremely bright both on the amplifier and at the guitar. But my general take is to try to get a more voice-like sound so that so it has a bit more dynamics for me. It also works quite well if you're working with harmonics roll off a little bit of high end, just a little bit. You still hear the harmonic, but it becomes, again, more vocal. Try to get some of that singing quality out of the normal distortion channel on my amp. Now, you've got to have noticed by now that in my style of playing, one of the things that I do, as I've said like two or three times so far, is I don't use the volume control on the guitar at all. I have them built in because somebody told me that it helps the tone of the pickups, that they're designed to have volume controls. Um, Steve Blucher from DiMarzio told me this. So they're still there. I hardly ever use it. I use a volume pedal and now we'll look at all the pedals that I use. So my guitars still have volume controls, even though I do not use them. I use a volume pedal and that will bring us to the next uh, basic segment of expanding the sonic palette of the guitar, and that is foot pedals. I've set up an array of pedals here that are pretty standard um, and give you an idea of some things you can do. I do hope that the amplifier section and the guitar section started to give you some inspiration about looking into some sounds that you can get from the most basic elements, but let's move on. Let's move on to the foot stuff. The way I've got my rig set up here, um, before the guitar signal gets to the amplifier, it's going into one, a TC compressor, which is right here at my right foot, which also has a little bit of an equalizer in it. I boost a tiny bit of 1,000 cycles, which gives me, again, more of that vocal sound. And I always have, almost always have a compressor on. because I like the basic color that it lends the guitar. Also, it seems to be able to make clean sounds ring out for uh, a nice long period of time. OK. Um, actually, I skipped one of the foot pedals, which you'll remember from before, which is the amp 
switching pedal, which is right here. It switches the channels and does some tone shaping as well. Um, it's okay. So the signal goes from my guitar to this TC pedal. From this TC pedal, which is a compressor sustainer, the signal is flowing upwards here to this a Roland Auto Wah, which is basically a quack box, automatic wah. Which can do a couple of things. It'll open according to, I like this one because it has an oscillator built into it, so I can do this. And this is the reason why it's up here. I was making a record with uh, Mick Karn and Terry Bozio, and I remembered seeing Adrian Ballou play many years ago and having an array of pedals that he twisted with his hand, and I thought, yeah, okay, I'll do that. One of my ugly sounds. Um, so this is a little wah-wah pedal that will move automatically, or I can get it to open up according to how hard I'm playing the guitar. Turn it on. And it'll go like this. opening now that wah will open up according to how loud I'm going into the pedal that's a pretty standard box compressor is pretty standard after that I've got another automatic wah I've still got my distortion on, that I use this little purple Japanese thing called a guillotone or guillotone wah rocker that an engineer gave to me. Um, it's an, also an automatic wah, except I use it as a fixed filter to darken the sound of the guitar real fast, real dark. So the fuzz guitar sounds like this. I keep playing in this kind of A minor center here so that um, you get a, you can focus in on one thing, I hope. Tone controls all the way up. Guitar is wide open, treble pickup. This is what it sounds like without the, the little auto wah. Auto wah number two. And this is what it sounds like with the dark control on. I like it because it, um, you can really go crazy with it. It makes, I'll, I'll turn some other things on the amp. Let me go back to the amp for a second and turn this up. Uh, this makes me feel like I'm getting one of those old Marshall sounds from uh, kind of over amplified, um, Clapton-esque, uh, Leslie West-ish, but kind of over the top. Now that's with my neck pickup. Let me just turn it up a little again. This is Slave Master on the amp, another distortion circuit. Here's with the bridge pickup. Very dark, kind of ugly. Let me turn the reverb down. Hang on, don't go away. Um, Tom Waits, there's some, some, somebody told me, so this is a paraphrase. Tom Waits said something like, music has to have its warts, which is something 
Having heard the paraphrase, I agree with, and this is one of my wart sounds. It's just really horrible. <laughs> At the same time, it's got a bit of a violin tone to it, so you can hear that there might be some ways to use it, either in a band or in a recorded setting. Um, now this is, um, again, same sound with, uh, let's say, without the little wah fixed filter on. <laughs> Excuse my balance, it's not very good. Um, next in this line, I think I'll turn a clean channel on the amp. Next in this line is something, again, very typical, a phase shifter. Now I'm going to make this sound very extreme, so hang on a sec. I will get off the camera for just a second. I'm making the sound of the phase shifter very extreme, so you can hear it clearly. First, treble pickup, very bright. Whoops, clean sound. No phase shifter. Now, the TC phaser goes on. Kind of underwatery sound. It's actually quite nice if you have a little echo on, maybe, and uh, kind of from the psychedelic era and uh, still has its uses. The echo, by the way, was off. I erred. Um, next on this line, I have a zoom driver fuzz box. Another thing that, here's the clean sound from the amp. Same pickup, etc. The zoom driver goes on. I have all different sounds set up here. Two different fuzz sounds on, are available on this particular fuzz box. You kind of get the idea. They're kind of, can be retro sounding or amp type simulators. Um, and you can also use a fuzz box to, as, a, as another preamp in case you really want to push the preamp section of the amplifier, you can turn the output level of the fuzz box up really high, even with just a little bit of distortion, only a little, so you can push the amp, the preamp section harder. That works very well with older single channel amps, I find. Okay, next in this line, another kind of standard-ish pedal. This is a chorus. <laughs> which make, gives you a little bit of that kind of 12 stringy sound and uh, you know what it's about and there it is. And uh, I guess we skipped over my volume pedal now. It fits in physically. And you've seen that I use this. I use it a lot as a part of my, actually my articulation technique. Um, like a lot of players do, I picked it up from from John Abercrombie, I think uh, people like Bill Frizzell, Henry Kaiser, uh, uh, a lot of people use uh, uh, volume pedals fairly regularly. Larry Carlton was another one who pioneered the use of the volume pedal a lot. And I use it as, it's a part of my, really a part of my right hand in a way, because I'll often hit something here, but you'll never hear it until my foot goes. So really, it's another articulator like the right hand. Next up in this line, before we get to the other pedals and the rack, is a little echo unit, which I have last after my volume pedal. So you can still hear the trail of the echo. Let me turn the echoes up a little bit. Turn the blend more echoey. There you hear it. Let me slow that echo down to 
about 300 milliseconds or so. So really, you can get quite a lot going right here with just a simple volume pedal. I'm going to put the echoes on quite loud with a lot of feedback, a little bit of phase shifting, and you get an idea Maybe a little bit of chorusing as well. I'll leave that out for now. You get an idea that you can do some things with the guitar that are more like... Maybe I'll turn the echoes up just a bit so they feed back just a bit more. Get a little bit more tail on the sound and see what we get. more things on and off here. Got the phase shifter on, the chorus is on. I'll turn, let's see, go to distortion sound and see, leave the echo where it was. <laughs> some sounds that are kind of nasty as well. Change the phase shifter to a deeper phase, wider and slower. Very intense this should be. Um, I think I'll take all the reverb off, get this guy, the auto wah on, and get an idea for some kind of, I'll put the auto wah on very, very slow with the oscillator running the wah. Not my touch, but the oscillator. No reverb, no echo, compression, uh, heavy phase shifting, distortion, and we'll see what this sounds like. Let's play some. Uh <laughs> back off the volume pedal and you can hear that this is a sound that would lend itself well to feedback, which is a, a thing that we haven't covered at all as part of our kind of uh, exploring real sonic differences in guitar. Something um, fairly dramatic you can do that's, that can be either very beautiful or very, very aggressive depending on how, let's try to get some real whipping feedback things going here. The wah is still going, phase shifter is on, no um, I've got the amp distortion, compression, um, treble pickup, absolutely no reverb or echo. I'm going to get some feedback things going so the camera people are going to probably have to cover their ears. <laughs> You can imagine doing things like, um, if you're familiar with bands like My Bloody Valentine, Lush, Ride, bands that use a lot of extreme, distorted, slightly out of tune guitars with sounds like this that really kind of push. Now we're just talking about an amp and a couple of pedals and uh, there are quite a few possibilities there for you. Before we move on to the deep electronic stuff, I wanted to um, kind of encourage the, before we move into things that maybe cost you somehow more money, 
Um, I wanted to encourage still the ability to do things, uh, experiment further with the tools that are currently at your disposal. Now, one of the things that I discovered before I could do things like buy delay lines or harmonizers and such, and I still don't really like to get addicted to the kind of um, con uh, uh, a massive consumerism in the gear that I use. I like to settle in on pieces of gear and learn them really well. One of the things that I focused in on, and I know people like um, Henry Kaiser focused in on, and I've seen, was influenced by people like Fred Frith and Ballou many years ago, are things like the ability to use your hands in different ways, approach the instrument in different ways. Now, sometimes this means doing things that are, for musical reasons, may be noise-based, like you may want to do something like that at some point, and it may make musical sense, even if it's just for a second or for an entire tune or whatever. But there are also, um, you know, trends in music like this tapping thing that's come along. You may want to get into learning how to do, let me turn the phase shifter and the wah off. You might want to learn how to do things like that and maybe twist them to your own devices. Um, I don't do full um, two-handed tapping because it doesn't interest me that much. Um, I'm sure it's good for some people. For me, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an athletic event that I, can't, I don't really have the time to train for. However, there are things that I can imagine doing, like being able to get chord voicings with two hands. Or little movements in melody. with my other hand. Now I have a little bit of a difficulty because I have uh, very long nails on my right hand because I often play without a pick at all. Now there are some other things that come up about expanding the, the uh, sonic palette for guitar, um, which um, oh, yeah, I'm going to go off for a second here because in the beginning of the tape I said something about the guitar being the new orchestra in music. Um, I think I meant that there's been a kind of development where in Western music, piano was originally the orchestra. It played a full range of sounds. Guitar wasn't, guitar as a harmonic instrument wasn't really, it was more of a folk instrument and an accompaniment instrument, accompaniment instrument than it is now. When the amplifier was developed, it gave the guitar and signal processing and the ability to do things like detune and play very high or very, very high. It gave the guitar an ability to be the harmonic instrument for supposedly Western music and also kind of orchestrate behind things. And I think it's important to check into guitar players like Bill Frizzell to see what a guitar can do in a trio or in a quartet. Um, that's, that's quite full and non-guitar sounding. Anyway, that's, uh, that was that aside. Um, where I was going was the ability to use your hands in different ways. We covered, we covered the fact that you can, um, you can find some ways to use tapping that are very musical that may not be the standard or the norm, which is what I encourage personally. Um, and there are some ways to use picks that, uh, that are quite unusual. Um, people like my friend Miroslav Tadic, who's a, an amazing guitar player playing electric, uses full right hand of classical and flamenco techniques to get incredible sounds out of Stratocasters and uh, Marshalls and Pierce amps, which I, I can't actually demonstrate for you, but I'll tell you about it. Um, you can do things like I moved to this stone pick, this pick made from agate about uh, in, I've actually used this since 1979, um, and it's got little jagged edges in it. When I am playing with my treble pickup, no left hand movement, I'm basically fretting the string 
above the, the 24th fret. Which you can do to musical effect at certain times. There are some other things you can do as well. You can bow at the bridge. All kinds of things. You can scrape. These are things, some of the things that I encourage to try that you might find an effect like uh, a phase shifter and a uh, delay line. Let me set this delay line again. Uh, that work really well with You might find that certain chords that you really like that are kind of strange, let's say a um, C triad over A flat. Work really well with a technique like that. Um, anyway, it's worth exploring. And uh, there are some other techniques with the pick that you might, that are, that might be interesting. One is uh, if you use a neck pickup, I have found this to occur. Um, and there are only a few people that I've ever showed this that I know about. I'm sure other people know about it, but I use my neck pickup. It's the bowing technique again. I'm playing at the 12th fret here on the high E string. It could be any string, but what I do is I search for the fifth. That's a B. There it is, from the E to the B. I search for that note. And now what's going to happen is, since I'm using, I'm putting the pick behind the pickup, behind the actual place where the sound is being sourced, um, I'm actually creating a new bridge. And that bridge is taking advantage of a scale length that was designed for this bridge, which means the frets are no longer going to do what they used to do. So instead of going half steps on the frets, like, it'll sound like this. Which actually puts you in a land where you're playing in some kind of another scale length. Everything is microtonally tuned, and you can get some very interesting um, <laughs> Notice that the pick is staying in exactly the same position all the time. And if I use the bar, it's a completely different tone and timbre altogether. Oh. These are just some ideas. They're starting places. Um, I don't really mean for you to uh, copy, but I think it's a really good idea to get some indicators that there are things that can be done with guitar that are quite interesting and even beautiful and maybe very musically useful that are very far off the standard mainstream way of approaching the instrument. Well, we weren't supposed to, but I blabbered on so. This is the end of tape one. There's another tape coming. Swap them and have fun. See you the other side.